không được G'day there, I'm Dan and welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench and to my build review for the Tamiya Citron Traction 2CV staff car in 135th scale. The Citron Traction Avant, um, first of all production in late 1933, early 1934 and like a lot of French cars from the 30s, 40s and 50s, it was quite innovative for its time. For example, it was front wheel drive. And while it can't claim to be the first vehicle to be front-wheel drive, it certainly can be the first vehicle to claim to be front-wheel drive and unitary body chassis construction. Basically the same techniques that are used in a modern front-wheel drive car today. The Citron was a good seller and it did very well right up until the beginning of 1940 when unfortunately this happened. historischen Schlachtfeldern stürmte im Weltkrieg Deutschlands Jugend mit dem Deutschlandlied auf den Lippen. With the German occupation of France, many of the little Citroen Traction 2CVs found themselves pressed into service for the German army. And that's where our review really starts for this kit. The Tamiya 135th scale Citroen Traction 2CV staff car is series number 301. The moulds date from 2009. And in the kit you get two main sprues, one clear sprue, four poly caps for the wheels, one decal sheet and one driver figure. There are markings and colour schemes for five vehicles, one in olive green for the French army, two in German panzer grey for the German army, one in civilian colours for the German army and one civilian vehicle. Known crow parts are included for the civilian versions. The kit includes clear and simple instructions in the Tamiya style of doing things. Although to me a paint callouts would require you to mix your own colours, unfortunately there are no alternative paint manufacturer callouts included in the instructions. Parts are flash free and crisp while fit is overall very good. The breakdown of parts however is rather unusual, with the body divided into two parts. One part being the main body and the other part being the front guards and the radiator grille support. A nice touch is the front doors of the vehicle are also separate and they include interior door card details, so you can pose these open if you like. While the parts fit well, the unusual breakdown of the parts will make masking the model to represent the civilian colour scheme quite tricky. Interior details what I would call representative, rather than any real attempt to capture the smaller details of the real car. Careful painting can still make the most of the detail that is there, and in this scale, it's probably going to suffice for most modellers. The seats in particular are very nicely moulded, and these are the main interior detail that you're likely to see when the kit is assembled, along of course with the steering wheel and a basic dashboard. External detail includes separate windscreen wipers and external door handles, which are a couple of nice touches. But if you're doing the civilian colour scheme, you'll have to do your own careful masking to paint the chrome strips on the hood and also on the front radiator grille. Alternative parts for the headlight lenses allow you to model the normal civilian style or the slit style blackout lights that were common on military vehicles at the time. There are reference photos I've been able to find online of the Citroen in service with the work marked with both types of headlight fitted, so really it's going to be your choice. This is what's known as a curbside kit, so that means basically there is some basic underbody detail. Many parts like the suspension, however, are quite simplified. There's also no engine detail at all, and the hood does not fold open, so models wanting to show their vehicle with the engine displayed will have to scratch build all the required detail, including the engine. Decals are included for the vehicle instruments, as well as separate clear parts for the glass for the doors and the body. This is the first kit I've ever encountered with this clear plastic pieces moulded separately and intended to be glued into the recesses for each of the doors and the windscreen. This results in a more realistic finish, but painting the edges of these pieces for the windows around is frankly a pain. Tamiya suggests cutting out paper masks from the instruction sheet and using these as a template to then cut out yet more templates in the form of masking tape to the correct profile for the clear parts. This just seems like a lot of work to me. I think a better solution would have been if Tamiya included plastic pieces to the same scale and profile as the paper masks they include. 
That way you could use them as a template to cut out the tape for the windscreens. This would have made the job considerably easier. The driver figure is a modern figure, as the moulds come from 2009, so he's quite well done, and he's dressed in a period German army uniform. The figure is posed as if he's driving the vehicle, and he'll look great if you wanted to have a driver in your model. However, no civilian driver is included if you decide to do any of the civilian variants. Decals are included for the instrument panel, and registration is for five vehicles. There is sufficient detail in this kit to make it a nice central display piece, or as a complement to other vehicles in a diorama. In the end, this is a simple kit, but it's fun to build and should prove really popular with modelers of all skill levels. Highly recommended. So that's it for this build review. Please don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos, and I welcome your comments below as well. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.